okay, Alex, we are ready to go. You know, after we did start doing this podcast, when we put out the first few episodes, eventually I was like, uh, I'm going to start filming an intro like after the fact. So then when the show oh. would end, I'd forget what we talked about the next day. I'd have to go back, remind myself what we talked about. Then I'd sit down in front of my microphone. I'd record this little intro segment where I'd come up, kind of stumble through words. Wasn't really sure what I wanted to say. I'd go, uh, uh, and the audio was even sometimes worse than it was when we recorded it, when we recorded our conversation. So I'm not doing it anymore, Alex. This is now our intro. Welcome, everybody, to the Old Men Magic Podcast, episode 24. We're going Bill O'Reilly style. Yo, yo, yo. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. So this is the beginning of the episode. I don't have any follow-ups from last week's episode. Uh, Often I'll, you know, think of a conversation we had and and think, oh, I wanted to add this. Forgot Mm -hmm. to say this last week. Or somebody will make a comment and it will stimulate something. But no follow-ups for from last week's episode. Do you have any follow-ups? Later, but I don't think so either. I didn't write anything down that was a big follow-up. So probably there will be things we revisit, of course. We'll come back to stuff. So let's just get into our into our segment for the day, our first segment. Mush. I wanted to talk about uh, another pitch spell cycle. This is the real reason why I, we discussed the pitch spell cycle from Alliances a couple, couple weeks ago, because I found new pitch spell cycles. Well, they're new to us. They're roughly 15 to 18 years old. <laughs> and everybody else already <laughs> knows about them. <laughs> but when I saw them, I was like, oh, man, I, I thought you were going to say when you were like 15 to 18. <laughs> I thought that the pitch spells and like all the only pitch spells I was aware of were the alliances ones. But I found out these other ones. I wanted to start with the OGs, the OG pitch spells from alliances. Today, we're going to talk mm-hmm. about the pitch spell cycle that came after the alliances. Well, the first yeah, I mean, I definitely I, knew there would be more, but I didn't know they would be in cycles necessarily yeah. similar. You know, Do you know what any of them are, Alex? Because so I, no, I was just going to say I have purposely not looked at these so that I would be surprised when we bring them up. Okay, perfect. So this pitch bell cycle today, we're gonna, the one we're going to talk about today. It's from Mercadian Masks, and I personally feel like there are two of them that are really good, two of them that are terrible, and one of them that's so so. And I think that's pretty much reflected in the prices. It's a good spread that the cards go for. So the first one I'm going to show you today, Alex, the first new card that is also 16, 17 years old. I don't know. It's Reverent Mantra. Reverent Mantra. This is the white pitch spell from Mercadian Masks. It is a rare. Its first and only printing was in Mercadian Masks. Its casting cost is three colorless and one white. It is an instant. You may remove a white card in your hand from the game instead of paying the casting cost for Reverend Mantra. Okay. It gives all creatures protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Current market price for the single color of your choice, right? Like you pick one color? Yes. From the color of your choice, a single color. This is how I'm reading it. Current market price is $3.49. Whoa, it's gone up three cents <gasps> since I wrote this down. Wow. Current market price is three dollars and fifty-two cents. I think this is an okay card. Uh creatures gain protection from the color of your choice. You can use it to save creatures. You can also use this for one big push to finish off your opponent, too, right? If you have like a white horde and they just have black creatures out or green creatures or red creatures. You can give all of your creatures protection from the color of their blockers to get through yeah, for, sure, one yeah. bit, for one big final push. That's the main thing I think of when I see, yeah, like this card is like, you know, it lets your blockers through or, yeah, maybe stops them from taking heat damage or, or you know. Heat damage is my, where my mind al- always goes. Uh, now I'm thinking of something. Gaining protection from color of your choice. That also applies to like board wipes too, like Wrath of God. Does it? I keep we might have had this, this. conversation. We've talked about this before, yeah, and gotten to the bottom of it, and then I forget <laughs> again. <laughs> this makes me think. I was thinking the other day. I was like, I'd be afraid to go back through our first twenty-three episodes just oh, to no. see how many times we like talked we're about wrong. the same thing. We're and talking about, re- yeah, definitely talking about the same thing. Didn't even realize it. I know we're going to be wrong about things every single episode, so that wouldn't shock me. But 
And I was thinking about this specifically uh, in reference to the conversation we had, I don't know, like an episode or two ago when I was like, uh, do you remember Dusty? And I just had this feeling that I had said like the same thing to you already like three or four times throughout the course of this podcast. Like, do you remember Dusty from Hot Shots? And you're like, yeah. Plus we've talked on the phone outside of the podcast. That's what can get confusing to me because sometimes I'll mention it in a card and then I'm like, did I say it on the show? Yeah, I have no life? idea. Uh, uh, Will, prot- protection from white, save your creatures from wrath of God. Do, 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 do. This is the this is the music that I play in the background. It's not bad. Or we're trying to figure stuff out. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this says yes. Wrath of God can destroy a creature with protection from white. That was my going to be my first instinct because it doesn't target them. Protection from a color grants the fo- grants the following abilities: cannot be targeted by spells or effects of the specified color cannot be blocked by creatures of the specified color. Okay, so it won't save you from board wipes. It'll save you from uh, again, fireball. That's where my mind oh, yeah, there's a, goes. There's an Wars. acronym there for that again. I, we, I mentioned it the one time. But I, 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 I would I think I would like this card for uh, like I said, a final push to get, get, to get through blockers. I would put it in an aggro white deck creature based deck a white weenie deck <clears throat> to push the, those last few points of damage through when needed or to just save a really important creature you know that can happen too but i think this is this is the pitch spell from mercadia mass that i think is a so 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 card okay i could see myself playing it under certain circumstances i might put it in a deck every once in a while feel like oh this wasn't as good as i wanted it to be it hasn't really been helping me take it out Maybe put it in a sideboard when I'm in a different kind of mood. Six months later, maybe put it back in, take it yeah, out yeah. again later. You know, yeah. one of those cards. It could be a surprise pop up, pop in, exactly. pop in and out of your deck. Um, yeah, I don't know why I think this. I might just be totally wrong, but I sort of feel like white lends itself maybe to having a card you'd want to pitch to it as well, like a white weenie card that maybe you don't, you know, or. Um, Maybe some sort of like removal thing that you don't necessarily need. It's like a dead card in the game because they don't have enchantments or artifacts or something like that. Yeah, you could find um, yourself green. In I think that way of green too, because you might end up with like you know a mana elf late in the game that you don't need and get rid of like a one casting cost creature. Yeah, um, yeah, t- a tiny one one who isn't really doing much for you on turn six yeah. or something. But I don't know. You could probably say the same thing about all the colors. They all have low casting cost cards that you might have in your deck and you know not mind getting rid of. So. I do think that is your bias, Alex. As a white green player, I have trouble pitching white and green cards. But yeah. also, no, I kind of understand where you're coming from because I do tend to build like horde decks, small creature decks. Yeah. And sometimes I mean, they just yeah, are. So, black, would it be the same kind of thing with black too if you're playing like a little black creature deck? So, I don't know. But yeah, I like, I like this card. I like the art. I do too. It's Rebecca Gway. Yeah. That's how you pronounce her name. Is it Gwei you found out? Okay, good. No, I have no idea. I don't know. Oh, That's just what I'm saying. I was going to say Gwai, but I, I feel bad mispronouncing people's names. Let's just go. You, Asa Mewei, you say you Say Rebecca way. G. Okay. And then somebody's right. That's true. Yeah. I oh, we're probably both wrong. We could both be wrong, actually. That I was going to mention because I liked it. Now I can't remember what it is. You saw one of what? One from her the other day that I liked, but I can't remember. I was looking through cards and I remembered that she did the art for Dark Ritual and Mercadian Masks. And I thought, oh, I need to buy some of those Black Border Dark Rituals. Oh. Because if I don't have a beta or an alpha Dark Ritual, which I never will, and I don't have the Dark Ritual with the Frank Fazetta art from the Secret Layer that we talked about last week, then... Show me hers. I'd like to see that one. I think her art from Mercadian Mask might be my next favorite. I like the color scheme. Oh, well, that's interesting. I like the the. Uh, I like that. I like the cloud and the how she painted up the cloud in the background. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool art. That's neat. I found the card. Uh, it's called Traveler's Cloak. It's from Invasion. Hmm. Don't know what that is. It's a land walk enchantment. 
You're playing on a land walk deck, aren't you, Alex? I would never do that. It's terrible. Two colors, one blue, enchant creature. As Traveler's Cloak comes into play, choose a land type. Enchanted creature has land walk of the chosen type. When Traveler's Cloak comes into play, draw a card. Oh, it's a cantrip, too. Yeah. Not bad. This is for your unblockability deck. Unblockable deck. Unblockable creature deck. I don't know. I just think, you know, throwing some land walk as a splash into certain decks to, like, get your creatures through sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Same with, like, Shadow or, you know, something like that. Okay, so Reverend Mantra. That's the first of the five in the cycle. Yeah. Sorry to Three go off. $3.49. I think it is so-so. Might bad. play. Might yeah. play sometime. I'd say not bad. I'd put it in the deck. Next one, Alex. By the way, I like, oh, 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 okay, well, this is different, but I was going to say I like that that one at least was four casting costs instead of five. It's just this white one's... three, so you can actually use it. Like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to pitch for it, you know, three mana, whatever. Next one. This is the blue pitch spell from Mercadian Mask. It is called okay. Misdirection. It's a rare first printed in Mercadian Masks, reprinted in Conspiracy. I don't know what Conspiracy is yet. Casting cost, three colorless, two blue, instant. You may remove a blue card in your hand from the game instead of playing Misdirection's mana cost. Target spell with a single target targets another target instead. I feel like they could have written that diff in a different way, but <laughs> we get the point. Essentially, a pitch deflection, right? I mean, this does what deflection did back in the day, which just changes the okay. target of a spell to a target of your choice. What was that, like blue four or something? Blue three? I what believe it was blue cost? three. Let's pull up deflection real quick. And 14-year-old uh, Steve loved playing deflection. That's I don't a know fun that, card. I like I, doing that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that it. I got it to work that often, but oh boy, right. when it did, it sure was fun. Yeah. Yeah, deflection is three colorless, one blue. Target spell, which much have a single target, targets a new legal target of your choice. I guess it has the same kind of... The language is Mr. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's a classic sort of effect for like an RPG game. You know, if you ever played like Final Fantasy, you cast like reflect on yourself and bounce the spells back at them. Um, you know, similar to a card like, uh, what was the other one? Uh, is it Reverberate? Is that the card I'm thinking of? There might be a card, card named Reverber Reverberate. I don't know. I had a, I had one, a Legends one back in the day. Oh, no, that's not right. Dang. There is a Reverberate. Yeah, that's red, though. Reverberation. How about that? Reverberation. That's how many cards there are now that there's reverberate and reverberation. You get them confused. Reverberation is from Legends. Oh, this yeah. is one of the very first, like, sort of expensive, like, old cards I bought, I think. It wasn't much, but... It's just, uh, it's specific to sorceries. So, basically... Shoving people's yeah. fireballs back in there. But, but, but back then, yeah, when we were playing in, you know, revised or whatever, like, you know. I mean, that's what I loved to do with deflection. Somebody fireballs and you say. There just weren't as many today, spell punk. options. If you wanted uh, like a big damage spell, you know, it's probably a sorcery. Yeah. Oh, reverberates $34, $38 right now. That's a rare. Yeah. Reverberation from Legends. Rare. Yeah. I want to say when I bought it, it was in the teens. It was like a fifteen or twenty dollar card, maybe. Way back in the day, I don't know. Can't remember though; it's hard. By the way, um, going back for a second to Reverend Mantra, they did change the language a little bit. Now it says, "Choose a color." All creatures gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. So instead of all creatures gain protection from the color of your choice, so you can't individually choose each creature. Oh, which was okay. My question. Okay, yeah. I assumed that from the initial uh, from the initial language, but yeah, I guess it could have been interpreted differently, which is why you asked the question. I also just realized that it's all creatures, not just creatures you control. Yeah, I missed that the first time. Okay, anyways, back to misdirection. It's a pitch spell deflection. The yeah. art taking one guy's head, swapping it with another head. It it's takes face off. face off to the next level. It's, <laughs> it's head it's off. Head off. I like the guy in the middle, too, with his crazy mask thing. I think he's Almost. the one doing it. Yeah, he looks like he is. 
He's the he's the evil sorcerer swapping like, get heads. These heads over here. This card, not cheap. Nine seventy four. It used to be a lot more expensive back in the day. Twenty fourteen. Twenty three dollars oh, wow. plummeted. Huh. It's been a decade dropping in price down to two bucks. We could have picked it up for Alex back in twenty twenty. Now it's five X. We could have taken all of our funds, all of our savings, used our savings, our life savings to purchase as many possible copies of Misdirection as we could. We could have five extra our money in a year. Yeah. But we didn't do that. I'm trying to see what years these reprints were. 2014. That's, that's what I was thinking. Conspiracy. And 2017, it looks like. I'm Conspiracy. trying to read the small print on the card. Conspiracy was 2014. And that's exactly when the price drop started. Okay. Yeah. And then 2017, it just wasn't going to recover after that, I guess. I wonder a while. this is, you know, uh, this Dominaria remastered. There are a bunch of things from the pre-modern era that aren't uh, uh, reserve list, but just hadn't been reprinted. And they're seeing their first reprints right now, or at least their first reprints in quite a long time. I'm I'm wondering if the price is going to cr- like the price, the price of this cratered and over the course of three years. I'm wondering if the same thing is going to happen. I don't know how limited Dominaria Remastered is yet. I hope it does because it would allow me to to build up my play sets of pre-modern stuff. Yeah. Do you have any in mind specifically? Copies. Just everything. <laughs> I don't remember. I haven't written down the list exactly. I right. just I just know that when I was going through the Dominaria but there were a few. Yeah, there were cards yeah. I recognized in there. Yeah. I got to open libraries in there again, right? Like, I wonder yeah, what's yeah. going to happen with the price of that. I don't know. Especially, what, what was it, the fourth edition one? That's what I would expect to be affected the most. And especially because the borderless art variant in Dominaria Master is really cool. You know, same thing with the, the tutors or another thing I was thinking about, although I, I kind of, I did most of my tutor purchasing already. I don't have play sets of all the tutors, but I already started buying tutors. So if those crater, it won't save me that much. The crazy right. thing about Sylvan Libraries, there's already so many printings yeah. and it still has value. So, like, I don't know. What will this do? I want to original like legends versions one. from the new set, by the way. There's the okay. borderless, and even the, the bordered one is pretty cool art. It's already been done before, but it looks good with the retro border. Misdirection nine nine seventy four current market price. Yeah, fighting back up now. It is. I like this card. Uh, I like it too. I kind of want to pick up a couple. Uh, I don't know how often it gets played, but you know, you're playing blue. Everybody expects counter spells, all sorts of different counter spells. For pre modern formats, full of various counter spells. They're not always specting ones that shove the spell right back in your face. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's you know. Not as versatile as Force of Will, but when you use it, the benefit is even bigger. It you. could be so, even more devastating. Yes, you know. it will be. Yeah. Third one, Alex. Third this one. is this is the oh, black. Wait, before we, I was going to say okay. one other thing. Like in that, like you know, going along with that thought, I think it might mean that Misdirection is probably going to be a spell that's better later in the game. You know, like you can use Force of Will pretty early. Oh like, yeah get the tempo on your side yes. but this might not be very useful early because you might not have like like you know a new target yeah so exactly yeah. yeah i guess maybe the best thing to one of the best things to you, you could use it for is if you get out like a critical spell a critical creature critical enchantment whatever early in the game and they try to remove it yeah you can pitch this to reverse it back at them but of course then they have to have something in play already yeah yeah, but I'm we'll thinking say, of it, yeah, so but maybe better as like a finisher or a late game, like heavy yeah. you know, hitter, tide turn or whatever. Cool, though. I like it. I'm into it. I kind of want to pick up a couple. Was that your favorite one or is that? This is one of the two that I think okay. are the best in the cycle. Okay. This and the next one that I'm going to talk about. Unmask. This is the black, the black pitch spell from oh, Arcadia Mask. Also, a really cool art. RK Post, Marky Post's son, coming through again. 
Every time I see uh, a car a card that he's illustrated, I really like it. I'm saying he. I don't even know that RK Post is a uh, um, uh, male. I don't even know that. Or even if a male, I don't know that he goes by he. I don't know. Right. I don't know why I think RK Post is a male. <laughs> it sounds more like a guy's name, but it could it be. Kind of does. Who knows. It's, yeah, it's an know. initial name. It doesn't, you know. Anyways, RK Post. Whoever you are, really good art all the time. I, every time I see a, the cards that you've illustrated. I'll have to pay Un- attention. Unmask. Uh, three colorless, one black. Sorcery. You may remove a black card in your hand from the game instead of paying Unmask's mana cost. Look at target player's hand and choose a non land uh, card from it. Okay. That player discards that card. Okay. So it's a card for a card, but you get to choose in both cases the card you pitch and the card you take from them. Yeah. So early game, you can steal something very critical from your hand. And then at the same time, you can put something that you don't really care all that much about into your graveyard, or you can even put something that you want in your graveyard. Ah, that's graveyard. a good point. And you're playing black. Oh, no. Wait, no, it removes it from the game. Damn it. Damn it, yeah. I got excited is- for a second. I was like, oh, it's not like Force to Will. And, oh, but it, yeah, it removes it from the game. It would go well with black for that strategy, though, unfortunately. This is why I need you in the podcast, Alex, because you actually read the cards. I The words come out of my mouth. I make the sounds, but I don't actually always pay attention to what I'm reading. You just make the sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to my original point, which is it's still good that you get to choose the card in both yeah, cases. For you sure, choose for what sure. you pitch. You choose what they remove. That can be critical. Mm-hmm. Especially I would if play this just for the black three. Uh you know, yeah. it's expensive for that, but, you know, to take a good card away from them would could be worth it. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, it could work, like you said, early in the game to, you know, take their most important important card out of their hand, uh, you know, slow them down. Look this up on Gather, Alex. What are we missing? Okay. What else do people use for, uh, Unmask for? There's got to be other things than just selectively removing a card from your opponent's hand there's got to be tricks it's not cheap either it's almost like a 20 dollar card well okay even some cards can steal from your opponent's graveyard so like anime dead for example uh you could drop a big creature out of their hand into their graveyard graveyard and then take it you could do that yes <clears throat> oh you could target yourself with the spell Okay, I go back to my original, <laughs> my my second comment, my original second comment. It's not the card you pitch. You can target yourself with it and remove a card you want from your hand and get it into your graveyard. So I was yeah. correct for the wrong reasons, but I was correct, which is the important part. Yes, that's the part that I'm going to focus. On. <laughs> now, I mean, that's like you're using you're using like three cards now. Who cares like, to set that up? So. Uh, okay, if you really want to, but card advantage is not important. <laughs> I don't know where uh, if you've learned otherwise, you're totally wrong, Alex, and you've been doing magic wrong your entire life. <laughs> <clears throat> this is one of the two that I like the most from the cycle unmask and uh, <clears throat> the last one that I just read that I already forgot the name of misdirection. There we go. Is it a twenty dollar card though? That's I'm surprised how expensive it is. I don't want to pay right? twenty dollars for this. Yeah, neither do I. Personally, it was just up to over thirty bucks, a little bit wow. over thirty bucks, uh, mid twenty twenty two. It's had two crazy spikes in its lifetime. Back in 2017, it was over 20 bucks, and it dropped down to about 10. Stuck there for five or six years. Spiked ever COVID like everybody did because everybody thought they were going to die, and they were like, I need to spend my remaining time on this earth taking all my money and buying as much cardboard as I possibly can before I before I die from COVID. And now when everybody is still alive, you know, however many years later, they're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with all this cardboard i don't even have much time to play magic the gathering now they're putting it all back on the market because they've all lost their jobs because we're going into a recession i hope we so see some mask- things on the market the dual lands have been selling i've been kind of watching a couple of them disappeared that i was looking at the other day mm-hmm. um they're not few, getting that cheap yeah. yeah a few things are still hot but a lot of stuff has come down um 
by the way, City of Traitors is going up. I saw Some that. The deck that uses four of it is hot right now. So that's Which another a, card now that like I will never be able to afford. I know it's kind of a bummer because like I would like to play I would like to play some decks that maybe run some cities of trade city of traders, mm -hmm. maybe run Glim I like, yeah, I want that card, but yeah, I can't afford Grim it. Monolith is another card out there that like okay, maybe I would like to try this out in some decks, but it's like they're not really the kind of decks that I love playing, so there's no way I'm ever going to spend like over a thousand dollars on a place. Yeah, and like interest. Guy's Cradle, you know, like obviously a great card, but like I can't, it's, you know, how do I justify paying that? There's a you lot of good lands like that. There's a lot of good lands that are expensive, you know. One Saturday, you just you just come home, you wake up, no, you wake up, you start drinking Saturday morning. Ah, okay, yeah. And then you just drink till you're blacked out. And then I've bought almost a blacked out. Sarah's Sanctum or Tolarian Academy you're, you're or something. So drunk that you don't know what you're doing and you won't you won't remember it the next day, but you can still like move. Your motor skills aren't so impaired that you right, can't yeah, get yeah. on the internet, type in Gaia's Cradle into TCG player and just like hit the hit the button. Yeah. Or it takes me half an hour to type in my yeah. credit card number, but I get it right eventually. You have to make those kind of purchases when you're impaired <laughs> severely. Yeah. Research them drugs when you're or sober. Alcohol. Research them when yeah. you're sober and then use drugs and alcohol to make yourself pull the trigger. Yes, or just really tired. Cause sometimes I make stupid purchases at like four in the morning when I can't fall asleep. But oh, never yeah. that's never that big. You know. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, I haven't made anything that stupid. That's when I almost I almost bought like a limited unlimited land of war elves back in the, like uh, five months ago for no reason at all. Not not that that's like a particularly stupid purchase or anything, or it's not really expensive. They're not really expensive either. But like I did had no re I, there's nothing I need needed a play set of like a, unlimited land of war elves for. But I like was very close to purchasing them on eBay one night at four in the morning just because I was tired. And I just saw them right there and I was like, ooh, yeah. I've, I've, yeah, I've picked up some cards that I don't really have any reason to buy just because, like, I, I don't know. They're unlimited, so I think they look nice. I know. Because they're unlimited. It gets me. And then I'm like, ooh, uh, unlimited. It's wonderful. And then when it comes up, when it comes to me, I'm like, ah, it's not beta. <laughs> oh, oh, mm -hmm. the poor unlimited cards. It's not beta. And then you got to go buy it. And I can't, beta prices are too high for me to ever yeah, get. Yeah, I know. Beta is too. There's a few things I can afford, which is cool, but like, because then it's not even alpha either. It's a, the second edition. Yeah. And you know, before I used to co collect books, I still kind of do, but not that much anymore. At least not stuff started by magic cards again. I don't want to pay money for second editions. I never paid anything for a sec or second printing. Even first mm. edition, first printing was it. If it's first edition, for second printing, I'm not interested. Uh, Almost nobody's interested. That's kind of how the market is. I can see that coming from books. I don't have quite the yeah. same bias. Yeah. It is different a little bit for Magic the Gathering for me, though, because I look at it's not just second edition. It's also the black border. Yeah. So it's the upgrade from the white border to the black border. And it's the first edition with that corner, those corners. You know? Yeah, I don't care about the corner, though. Yeah. Aesthetically, the corner doesn't really do anything for me. It is just that some cards do look so much nicer with the black border. To me, the I still board. there's still a part of me that makes me lean towards beta because of the whole, like, back in the day, alpha cards weren't legal. Yeah. And so beta were actually more expensive, yeah. uh, at least for a short time. And, you know, that's just kind of, you know, I want my deck to be, like, standard and have all the same, like, corners in it. You know, not that I'd turn down an alpha card by any means, but like, you know, and since they look other than that, pretty much identical, I'm like kind of happy specializing more in beta cards for collecting, but I still can't afford any of them except for some lions. Yeah. If I ever, if I ever do pick one up, I haven't bought any beta since we started buying again, but like, I've thought about just getting like another beta disenchant or something. Oh no, that's not true. I bought one beta shatter. Maybe oh, yeah. like five or six months ago. I remember that. Uh, I could still do that every once in a while. Pick up a beta common and, and be happy with it. But then to take the extra jump to that alpha, it's like the price. Yeah. I can't pay like Almost several hundred crazy. dollars for an alpha common. I can't do it. Yeah. I just, I can't justify that either. It's like if the, you know, the market could drop out of that. Like 
I don't think it will like completely for all magic cards, but there might be enough of a decline that something like an alpha common goes way down. Maybe. Right? Do you think so? It could, but I think that only happens when everything goes way down. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, whatever what we've saying. bought has yeah. already has also just collapsed in price. But at least you're not putting as much capital into it. You know, it'll still drop, let's say it still drops 90%. But you bought a ten dollar card as opposed to a three hundred dollar card. Like I can see an alpha different. common dropping more than like playable alpha cards do. You know what I mean? Like if. Oh yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, we're just like, speculating about random scenarios now, so you know it doesn't matter. But. But there are definitely some cards that nobody. Yeah, the playable, playable beta unlimited. The the most playable cards will, if the market collapses, those will be the last to fall. Yeah. Well, let's say you have an alpha sea serpent or something. Not going to do well. That's like, I can I, see that's that kind of point. There's stuff, yeah, that people are just buying because it's alpha and it's like they're trash cards otherwise. I don't even remember if a sea serpent is a common or anything. No, a common doesn't really matter in alpha. It's still so there's so few alpha cards that yeah. even a common is like very yeah, rare. A terrible so. card that nobody plays. Yeah. yeah. More about the card. Yeah. I'm going to hear from somebody about their sea serpent deck. Yeah. Yeah. I've never played a sea serpent, Alex. Have you? I never have. I always thought it was horrible, but like, I feel like I've seen it mentioned somewhere. Someone put it in something. Uh, Hopefully, it mentioned in a list of terrible cards. It might have been something like uh, something from like a really, really old, uh, like like deck building advice article mm-hmm. or book or something, and they like mentioned it because it was like there was just like almost nothing else like that. You know, five five land creature in blue. Maybe you put it in your uh, Alpha 40 deck. Sea Serpent is a common. Yeah. Cannot attack if defending player controls no islands. If at any time you control no islands, bury Sea Serpent as five colorless, one blue, five, five. For any kids out there who never, never saw a Sea Serpent. When was the last printing of Sea Serpent? Fifth edition. It's been a while, Alex. Oh, wow. They gave up on the... They gave up on that card. The art wasn't bad on it. I know why I was looking at Sea Serpent the other day. Guess who? Uh, guess who illustrated Sea Serpent? Guess oh, who painted oh. that? Oh, but I can guess. What else do you think he? What else do you think he painted? Is this the guy who did Bounty of the Hunt? And Willow Sater, and yeah. Willow S- Sater. So he's redeemed yeah, himself in your Sater. eyes. You just said the right. art on Sea Serpent ain't bad. You didn't say it's wonky. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like this art. <laughs> looks cool in a black border if you look at there's so many cards from like revised uh unlimited and revised and if you see them in a black border all of a sudden you're like wow it just looks so cool the contrast like all of a sudden yeah the contrast does look much better one more thing before we get on to the next uh pitch card because i'm now staring at the list of sets that sea serpent was printed in summer magic alex i have a question to ask you about summer magic i was reading a little bit about it on reddit I don't know, a couple months ago, actually. I forgot to bring this up. And I've heard this before, too. But somebody was talking about how artificial they believe the market is for Summer Magic. The reason it's so expensive is because it's incredibly limited. But supposedly, there's somebody out there who is sitting on pallets of Summer Magic. And he slowly trickles them out into the market. And they're not really rare. Not really. I, I read something are. like that somewhere too. I think. And just then passing. Rudy no has problems. also mentioned this too in his one of his videos, just also kind of in passing about the summer magic market being highly highly manipulated. And he didn't really reveal any details, but he's like, just you know, know that it's not as rare as many of you think it is. Now, Rudy could you know I don't know. Rudy might have his own reasons for saying this. Who knows? I don't yeah. know. I don't know anything about the market. But in in Reddit, on on this Reddit post, somebody was like, "You can you can find out who, you know, you can you can find the account who supposedly owns this big stash of Summer Magic." They're just like Google Summer Magic on eBay. See the name of the person who's always having some, who always has Summer Magic cards up for sale mm-hmm. and always has for years. And not a lot of them are trickled out. I found this account. And the account name on eBay is 
old man magic. No, no Alex. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, Alex, we are old men magic. Correct. Different. And Alex, I know that I'm not sitting on pallets and pallets of something. I am also not. I was. I wanted to ask if you are old man, no, ma- old no, man magic. No, Steve. Would you no. tell me if you had pallets of summer? I magic? would tell you. I okay. would tell you. Also, I think you came up with the name for the podcast. I don't know what you're talking about. Next <laughs> card in the pitch cycle from Arcadian Masks is the red pitch card. Cave in, Alex. Cave in. It's three colorless, two red. It is rare. It's first and only printing is in Mercadian Mask. It is a sorcery. You may remove a red card in your hand from the game instead of paying Cave-In's mana cost. Cave-In deals two damage to each creature and each player. Alex, I think Cave-In is terrible. This is awful. I'm Mar- furious. Current market price of $0.86. Cents. <laughs> I don't want to get trapped in this Cave-In. I don't think anybody plays this card, which is probably why it is so cheap. I think in a world where red has so many cards that yeah, do just so many similar better. things can deal direct damage to all of an opponent's creatures plus them or however many and, X opponent's creatures and them, however you want to divide it up. It's like well, in, in this world, you don't need a cave in. No, you don't need to play cave in. No. And also like, some of these cards they made for casting cost. Why would they make this one five casting cost? It was already like on the table as an option. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they were doing that within this cycle of cards. Like they could have made this forecasting cost. It still wouldn't be good. Yeah, it's up there with, uh, I mean, the two high, highest casting cost cards in the cycle are Misdirection, which is one of the two best in the cycle, and Cave It. Yeah. A terrible card. <sighs> Now, maybe it's people uh, will tell us what they do with Cave-In, but I don't see this getting played outside of like a Mercadian Masks draft environment or something. Yeah, I mean, I guess the fact that it's a pitch spell will always have like utility. I, uh, I don't know. What's Pyroclasm? I'm looking up, I, I'm trying to, th- I thought of the dark immediately. I'm looking up Inferno <laughs> and Eternal Flame. Inferno is a big, big casting cost. What is it? Six or seven to play? Five. Okay, seven to play. Six six damage to everything. everything, The whole. And you can't stack a card, obviously, to cast it for free. So, not a good comparison, maybe. But I like the six damage. Okay. Pyroclasm. Pyroclasm, yeah. Very This is what I want to play instead of Caven. Now, it doesn't do two damage to your opponent, but it also doesn't do two damage to you and all of your creatures. Right. And you can't pitch anything to play it, but it's only one colorless, one red. Yeah, Pyroclasm a, a, a creatureless deck with red in it, then maybe cave in starts to get better. Maybe, <laughs> but, but still, I mean, you got What yeah, are you going to take out of your? Red, you could play Earthquake in your creatureless deck, or play, you know, right? What's wrong with you Earthquake? Could. And you could uh, do t- you could do two da- two dam- You could, geez, Louise, deal two damage to everything for three mana, and you have the option of increasing if you need to. Eternal more, Flame just does versatile. damage to your opponent, so that's probably not a good. It doesn't deal damage to creatures, so. Cave in. Terrible card. Worse than Contagion. Worse than Bounty of the Hunt. Is it worse that's... than Scars of the Veteran? I can't remember. No. No. <laughs> I can't remember what Scars of the Veteran. Just does. saying that. <laughs> Scars of the Veteran was like a like a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Did it just pump your blockers? It was like, yeah, it was like a. Uh, I'm trying to think of the card now. Righteousness. It was kind of like a kind of righteousness sort of. Yeah, but terrible because righteousness gives you like plus seven, plus seven or something. Yeah, and it's and it's uh, sweet because it's original. Yeah, alpha card. One. Scars of the veteran. Prevent up to seven damage to target creature or player. Put plus zero plus one counters on that creature at end of turn. We don't need to revisit scars of the veteran. No. Cave in. Terrible. Should be less than a dollar. Last of the five cards in the Mercadian Mask pitch spell cycle, Alex. Okay. I also don't think this is very good. I thought we were done for a second. I forgot about green. Kind of disappointed. I wanted green to have a better. Uh, 
a better card. And actually, I bought four of these, and I don't even know why. Uh, <laughs> I just added them to like a TCG player. I don't even know why. Order. I think what happened is like five months ago or something, I was just looking at like pre modern mono green deck lists. And one day I just like ordered a bunch of cards that I saw in a deck list that were like cheap. They were like under a buck. So I was like, I'll just throw these in. I'll just get them. And then when it arrived, I was like, this, what am I going to do with this? Do people play this? <laughs> vine, <laughs> vine Dryad. Okay, so this is the first one that's a creature. That's interesting, yeah. at least right off the bat. It is rare. First and only printing in Arcadian Masks. Casting cost is three colorless, one green. Creature, it's a Dryad. It's a 1-3 with Forest Walk. You may play Vine Dryad anytime you could play an instant. You may remove a green card in your hand from the game instead of paying Vine Dryad's mana cost. So, I mean, it's not terrible, but like if you don't want to pitch a card, it's three colorless and a green for a 1 3 Forest Walker. Green has way better creatures. Well, you all, and you can play it as an instant, which isn't huge, but you, know, you can it play it as an instant. It, but, so it could be like so, a surprise blocker. Yeah, but th- and then that's kind of like what's the big, you know, it's it only one, has one three, power. So it's not a great surprise yeah. blocker. Uh, so, but it could still be, you know, could still be useful, I guess. It doesn't make me want to puke, <laughs> but. When I think about all the powerful creatures green has, do I do I want to take anything out of my? I have a mono green pre modern yeah. deck right now. Do I want to put, take? Yeah. Do I want to take anything out of that deck? Put the vine dryad in? I don't know. Yeah, I was also thinking. Of, I was also thinking about playing around with like a, uh, like a, the ten land stompy uh, deck type, green deck where you just have ten lands. You have certain cards that let you dig for lands you play winter orbs and all low casting cost creatures or bounty the hunts played in there a lot too because you can pitch stuff for it and still play it do you want to play vine dryads in that i don't know i still think that i have plenty of one two three drops that i yeah, put I just, in the vine dryad and actually, actually a really think, specific deck you'd have to make use of its forest walk ability i think you'd have to be making use of everything that this card does and now you're getting into a weirdly specific deck. <laughs> yeah. The the instant thing is weird because Forest Walk is an offensive ability, and playing it as an instant and it doesn't have haste, then is defensive pretty much. Right? Like so it doesn't have haste, but does that mean if you play it as an instant on your opponent's turn, then your turn can it attack that first turn? Because technically it's a different turn, right? Oh, um, so I think that we're work. getting into stuff that I haven't thought of for years, but I sort of don't think so yet. I think that's terrible. The way what used to be called summoning sickness, right? We, I don't think they even say that anymore. Uh, we need to call the judge. I think it's like you have to, I, I think the wording is something more like you have to have had it in play f- since last turn, or you, you had to. Oh, boy. Boy, oh boy, Steve. I'm sorry. Here's, I just typed in Vine Dryad on Gatherer. It has a 4.287 rating. That is high. That's pretty high. And one person is complaining that it has a rating of 2.833 with just nine votes. This must have been early on. He goes, are you people demented? This main green stompy is great. Turn zero Dryad, turn one Ranker and attack for three damage. So from what he's saying, it sounds like you can play it as an instant on your opponent's turn. Pitch a spell, drop it, and then uh, turn okay. one on your turn, drop a forest, tap, play a ranker, attack for three. Okay, here's the wording I was thinking of and looking for. Uh, cannot The creature cannot attack or use abilities if it has not been continuously controlled by a player since the beginning of that player's most recent turn. So any time before the beginning of your current turn would make it not have summoning sickness. Okay. So yeah, if your if your opponent goes first, you could pitch a pitch a card from your hand, drop this on their turn, then your turn, your turn one, you're free to attack with it. I never exploited that uh, like timing or rule back in the day, but I also don't think there weren't very many creatures you could bring out at instant speed back then either. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, Okay, so that's cool. Better now. My opinion of it has improved. 
Three toughness flash block, or you can play for free, question mark. And it has forest walk, question mark. Excellent. I'm not so excited Who about three about toughness four? flash I... blocker, especially since I have to pitch a card for that. Might be good early on. You know, they think they're they're getting like a 2-2 two, two or, or like a 2-1 or a, you know, whatever through. And then you pull this guy out. I don't mean a 2-2, two, two, something with one toughness. Or you could do it with giant growth and, you know. Yeah. One of the main cards in Neared Landless Stompy, and even an old standard, the Dryad was a, a staple for aggressive green. People these days are spoiled by power creeping. We're not spoiled by power creeping. No, we're, no, old, no. we're old guys, and we're still, we still we just didn't have time to think about the card long enough. But here's another person. Only a 3.423 rating. Again, this is it has a higher rating now. For what this and Ranker did to make the 10 land Stompy deck. So again, everybody's referencing this 10 land Stompy. And I must have, remember when I said, I think I just saw a deck list and I just ordered everything cheap from that deck list. I know uh-huh. I was thinking about building a 10 land Stompy. Right. I guarantee you that's why I have four of these. Cause I just okay. one night saw it listed. In a yeah. Well, list. especially then, you know, if you, if you think about this being in the same, you know, meta as rank or like they were, you know, coming out in the same, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if they were technically in standard or type two, if it, that's what it was called back then at the same time. But, you know, if they're around the same time period of each other, you know. Yeah, I, I guess it isn't bad because, yeah, I play it cost me three cards. But it could give me a turn one, three, three trampling force walker. Yeah, that can attack that turn. And I didn't mean to say who does who cares about force walk because I like land walk, but it just seems to me that when creatures have land walk, people don't value it very highly. I have a hard this time thinking of I have a hard time thinking of times that like land walk won me a game. Yeah, it, people it's seem a, to like it on certain things, like on Soul Canar the Swamp King. People seem to think like, "Oh, it's cool that he has swamp walk," but on other creatures, they seem to think it's like, "So what?" I don't know. It's just like a thing that's there for me. I've never, uh-huh. I've never like put something in a deck specifically because it had a land walk ability. But if it does have a land walk ability, it's just like a bonus that sometimes works. I've out always good wanted to me. make it work, like not super heavy land walk, but I've always wanted to have at least some like you know uh, cards that change what land types my opponent has, and some cards with land type or land walk. Try to use it. I think you can make some decently strong combos without having to like invest too much uh i don't mean money wise but as far as like cardboard resources and yeah 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 cardboard what resources. what cards you're gonna take out of your deck to put it in or, or pretty simple combos okay so vine dry definitely better than cave in I do like the idea of, you know, using three cards to end up with a 3-3 three, three force walking trampler that can attack on my turn one. But that is the ideal situation for this card. Most times you have it in your deck. The ideal, you're not going to be, you're not going to have the ideal situation, right? Yeah. So yeah, ideal this, situation yeah, is. definitely have to be using this in a, yeah, I think that goes back to what I was saying. I was right. Yeah, yeah. This is a, uh, you know, you have to build around this card, have it in the right deck for sure. You were right all along. I was right. Uh, better than Cave In. Better than Cave In. Misdirection Unmask, both like. It has, I, it's, versatile. it's versatile. I like it. It's cool. Mind Dryad, so. Reverend Mantra. They're kind of on the same level for me, I think. Now, after we've talked about Vine Dryad. Maybe I'll work this in my 10 land stompy. I have all the cards I need for a 10 land stompy, except for like I'm missing one winter orb. I might throw it together. I just haven't put it together because I don't think it's as good as the green deck that I put together. So I'm like, do I want to build what I think is probably an inferior green deck? I don't know. Yeah. I'll do it anyways. Yeah. I need to buy more forests. (laughs) <laughs> I knew that's I knew that was gonna be the holdup is not having enough basic forests. I was just gonna say in addition to the one winter orb I'm missing, I don't have the forests. I just we're gonna talk about uh purchases later, but actually some of the cards that I just received as part of my recent purchases are just Mirage Mountains, Alex. I got like eight oh. new Mirage Mountains, so I can finally put together Mirage my, lands are great. Finally, finally put nice together my lands. uh Finally put together my goblin deck. Oh, cool. 
But anyway, misdirection unmask, then vine dryad, reverent mantra, and then cave in just at the bottom as a piece of garbage that just needs to be like crumpled up and thrown away in the trash. <laughs> now that I've said that, let me Google. Let me not Google. I was going to say Google cave in and gatherer. That's not how it works. Yeah, gonna, check it on gatherer. I'm going to search for cave in like and 4. gatherer. 4.8. I know people are going to be like, this is the greatest. Staple of the famous. <laughs> 3.7370. That's even higher than I thought it would be. Okay, very first comment is pyroclasm. Meanwhile, is the dreaded cave both? I don't totally understand that because pyroclasm isn't really a cave both. Cave both is more of... Cave in is more of a cave both because it's damaging both people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is a cave both. It's this a cave is a all. stupid comment, Curbster. Okay, hey, hey, we forgot about, we forgot about Commander, right? So it hits everything on the board then in Commander. Pyroclasm hits everybody's creatures in Commander too, though. True. Yeah. Yeah. Good and alternative that's more cast than dealing damage to them, but yeah. Good alternative cast to burn. Also see Firestorm. Firestorm is levels above Cave In. Which one's Firestorm? Come oh, by on the way, one. Commander also though, you could only use one of each card, so you might want it as a this is true. You know. Also, still garbage. I'm just trying to think. I'm brainstorming. Oh, Firestorm. I know. I remember this card. I need, to, I need to pick up some Firestorms because look, it spikes, it drops. It it's spikes, from Weatherlight, it but looks like spikes, it should it be drops. from Mirage. Spikes, it drops. There are several uh, cards from Visions and Weatherlight that I feel like should be in Mirage. And I think uh, maybe... They got bumped. Yeah, that's, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, It makes sense for sure. Yeah, weather light is not all about the African plains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what this art is. Firestorm I guess it's kind of, weather light's sort of like a going on a journey like set though. So maybe they like flew over this area. I guess it is okay, but. This could be, yeah. yeah weather it light seems like mirage or visions. Weather light is any land. It's all planes. It's just whatever plane the weather light yeah. ship was flying over <laughs> at the moment. I don't know how this all works, all these planes and stuff. <laughs> uh, one day, uh, one day I got to get into that, but. Uh, oh, I don't want to. Yeah. I was trying to read about uh, the new Phyrexian set that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Released. Uh -huh. And people were talking a lot about like the mythology and the characters. And yeah, I, I don't even this know. would be a set that's sort of like yeah. higher on mythology and storyline. It was just, I was looking at the comments know. and these tweets, and it was just people speaking a different language. I was like, yeah, I, I know. no idea what any people They're were talking very deep about. deep in it. They've read books about that, like books. I don't yeah. want to read a book. We talked about this before, I think. I know you don't want to read books, Alex. You <laughs> <laughs> no, not about I love books. What I mean is, one of the cool things about magic is I, I, I enjoyed getting the lore through like little bits, like dribs and drabs of lore that came to you through the color quotes and through the names of the cards and what they did in the artwork and, you know, the overall, like, you know, uh, everything about the card. Um, so, you know, I liked getting that piecing it together bit by bit. I don't really mm -hmm. want to read like, I don't know novels that they've like licensed out their ip to some like random writer who's like okay i'll write a book for you about your wizards i know i've never been attracted to that sort of stuff although you did introduce me to like that i don't want to say the dragon lance series because i don't know there's been oh, a yeah. lot of books written about yeah. D D too but there was the series oh of, yeah like, there's, there's definitely like something. a dragon lance like yeah, like, that we that I we read oops. in high school, and I just remember like bawling my eyes out because in uh, study hall because the dwarf <laughs> the dwarf died. Or, yeah, so that was a really good series. <laughs> Unlike Alex, I I do read. I like books. those. I, have I, I like those. I and uh, you're you're right. That's actually one exception for me is some of those D and the Dragonlance books. Um, I was a little hesitant to get into them at first. I never wanted to read like the Forgotten Realms books. Uh huh. Or anything, I thought it was sort of the same thing. I was like, ah, eh, this seems like it's kind of like I don't know. But the Dragonland stuff was all good. Yeah, I mean, I would have never picked them up if it wasn't for like you and several other people, like all saying these are great. So, and those actually were great. So maybe if anybody's listening, yeah, maybe the magic any, books are good. I, I shouldn't be harsh. I just, I'm sure all of them are. I <laughs> yeah, right. Bet. All of them are because I tried to read one back in like eighth grade and 
I put it down. I will bet there are many that are terrible, but there might be like one particular series put together by, you know, a really yeah. talented author that's really Definitely. good. So if there is one that's really good, let us know in the comments, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys, yeah. Firestorm. Firestorm. Somebody compared this to Caven. I mean, they didn't really compare it to Caven, but they're like, good al good alternative cast to burn. Also see Firestorm. This is on a whole other level. One red instant, choose and discard X cards to deal X damage to each of X target creatures and or players. Come on now. You can pitch two cards instead of one. But two cards and one to do two damage just to their creatures and them and not you. Yeah, and only and two also, of their creatures. Two of oh, their... Well, no, only one, right? X target yeah. creatures and or players. Either yeah. one creature That's and true. them or two, two creatures. Two of their creatures. Anyways, this one takes more resources, but it's so much more versatile. Actually, like Firestorm's a finisher too. You can do things to yeah. fill your hand and you pitch them and you just wipe everything. The only off. question That's I have about Firestorm is I feel like with red, like you're going to have maybe not a lot of excess cards in your hand that you, I mean, maybe it's, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it goes the other way. Like you have like mountains in your hand that you don't need later in the game. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the time red decks end up with like, burnt down your hand size well i know what you're talking about but this goes i mean people build around firestorm it goes in like yeah. non-traditional red burn decks where you make sure you have a big hand yeah uh, you can use it with black in black red reanimator you could empty your hand out into the graveyard yeah be my, my yeah for one red, it's yeah, you could probably play around this and do some interesting things. Yeah, I like Firestorm. I don't like Caven one bit, not one, one bit, bit, Alex. So that's the end of the Mercadian Mass pitch spell cycle. I like it. Uh I think it has a couple really good cards and then two other cards that I could see myself playing sometimes, having some fun times with it. I said some bad things about Vine Dryad, but you know what? I'm probably gonna play the entertainment stop. Alex. It's not terrible. Caven's the only terrible one. Yeah, no, I like those cards. Those, those are cool. I didn't know about them, and they're, you know, nice surprise to me. There, there's another pitch uh, cycle that we're, we'll talk about probably in about six years or something. So maybe like... <laughs> Episode 470. I was trying to do the math. No, yeah, I didn't it, do any math. I just picked a number. It would be around 400, around 400. Because they're... See, the next upcoming uh, pitch spell cycle. The the pitch spell cycle that was printed after Mercadian Masks, I think, was all the way in Cold Snap. I can't even tell you where when Cold Snap was printed, but it's a it's a new frame set. So we have a lot of old frame sets that we still need to go through before we get to the new frame. Okay, new frame set. I have to say, Mercadian Masks. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think people have kind of like a, a sort of a low regard for it. It's growing um, on me as I'm going through but the cards. I keep finding cards in it that I think are fun and cool. I do too. Uh, it looks like a pretty neat set to me. Yeah. By the way, I'll, I'll say, unless, unless I'm interrupting you from something else, let I'm me not. mention a card from Mercadian Masks. Or you're not. I had this in my notes uh, for financials. Uh, bribery. This card has come down. Uh, it's a card I like. Uh, I just found it the other day. Get off that. Uh, that was disgusting. That made me uh, sick. Or <laughs> shouldn't say it's come down too much, but it's it's, it's down deepen. from its peak. I mean, uh, it's been a twenty dollar card for like ten years. That's surprising. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it went up, and now is back down to basically its normal price. And I think when I looked at this on TCG Player, it might even be like less than that graph says it is. It usually is. This graph usually yeah, the market. That's price, not perfect, obviously. Yeah, TCG yeah. plays a little bit uh, lower most of the time. Bribery, three colorless, two blue sorcery. Search target opponent's library for a creature card. Put that card into play under your control. That player then shuffles his or her library. Hmm. I like it. It's, it's a, a little expensive, but it's a big it's a TV effect, you know. Yeah, it's a control magic that'll let you just to take any any of their creatures from their deck. Uh I guess. You know, it would be awesome if it, it's still awesome. <laughs> I was going to be like, it'd be great if you could steal something that they had already played 
or go uh, through their deck. Oh, yeah, that would be you cool. Know, that why would be do you nice need to go deck. over the top yeah. like that? This is still cool. Just going through their deck is good, but what's cool about Control Magic is that they wasted the four mana to bring that card out, and then you mm -hmm. take it from them, too. So mm -hmm. they each have their uses, which is neat. So on TCG Player, it's pretty much about $20. But then there's two people who have it up for 12 So you can grab like a $12 one, actually, if you wanted to. I just bought two of them. Cha -ching. I just did it right now. <laughs> okay, that's the end of that segment, Alex. Segment one is complete. Segment two. We were just going to talk about random stuff. And we were going to talk about... Uh, Anything interesting you noticed in the market, or we were just going to talk about our recent purchases because I have some recent purchases okay. I made. You have some recent purchases you made. Where would you like to start? Well, uh, we just did bribery. That was kind of off topic. Um, and I'll go from there with the other financial card financial card news I wrote down. This isn't even news, but I was just going to mention to you, you were talking about Ruck Egg and Ruck Egg, mm -hmm. the dark man of Ruck Egg, especially, which we like. Which is my uh, favorite. And for some reason, it's pretty affordable right now. Uh, you can get a Ruck Egg for, when I checked the other day, 30 bucks. I was I was going for a walk earlier today, Alex. And when I was walking, I was, listening so to, I was listening to another Magic the Gathering podcast called This Old Deck. It's an old school podcast. And I was also at the same time thinking about Ruck Eggs. I was just like in the middle of my walk. I was like, I need to get them Ruck Eggs. $28.49. $30. dollars $30. Get a $30 30, one. 30 now, 69 Audrey, market price. The dark, we've mentioned this before. Dark is better. Uh, multiple Arabian Night cards, they have like two versions where the colorless mana symbol is either light or dark. And for some reason, it seems like, I think consistently, yeah, the ones where the colorless mana symbol is light are actually yeah. more expensive than the dark yes. ones, but I like the aesthetics of the dark ones better. So this is working out well. I like me. it because it's specific to to Arabian Nights. Every yes. other card set has the light colored mana symbol, and in Arabian Nights, this is that's the only set with this on anomaly. So I'd like to get the dark one where it's different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see why some people might not like it because it looks a little weird. Oddly, though, uh, not I guess not oddly based on what we just said. The light colored rock egg is $120. Are you serious? Yeah. And there's only four of them for sale. Sir, there are many more of the dark rock eggs for sale. Sir, and, Alex. And what? What? Sir, Sly. <laughs> Sir, <Sly>. uh, $120. <laughs> TCG player says. TCG player says market price seventy dollars. I wonder if there was like a recent. Did somebody just like Someone get on TCG player and buy them all up or something? Few sales then, history. Uh, five have sold. Someone bought four of them, or four of them sold on January sixteenth. They were all highly played. So someone wanted a, a play set of ruck eggs, I guess, and bought four of the highly played ones. Other than that, no. The there were three sold in December. Three in November. There just haven't been many for sale. Interesting. I wonder if the light mana symbol ones are, for some reason, More less rare? common, even though they're common ones. Like, you know what know. I mean? Maybe they ended up in a different ratio than the, the dark ones. I don't know ones. the answer to that. I just like uh, I just like how the dark ones look. It's, it's unusual, yeah, like too. you said. It's specific to Arabian Nights. Also, I looked at Ruck Egg the other day again after you were talking about it, and I feel like I like it a little more than I thought I did back then or, or ever. Uh, I could see some use for it. I mean, it's not a great card, but it's a fun card. And yeah. you can build it, put it into all sorts of decks with board wipes, things that like Biggest wipe out everything on the board and animate the ruck egg or yeah. hatch the ruck egg. You use it as a blocker, a chump blocker, and then get your yeah. creature. Um, so it's pretty fun. I like that, you know, it has kind of a unique effect. Not, not really unique anymore, but, you know, uh, the only problem. I have with it is that it um, Swords of Plowshares just annihilates this card. Oh well. Swords of Plowshares annihilates everything. It does, but I mean, <laughs> at least usually you gain some life from it. Swords of Plowshares is, uh, the life gained is equal to the, the power, I can't even remember. Yeah, the power of the okay. creature, so you wouldn't gain anything. And you oh, wouldn't well. get your 4-4 four, four creature. Oh well, I mean, that happens to me. That's when I pout, and then I peck up my cards and I go home. 
flip the table. Yeah. Flip the table, pack up, go home. But yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, you know, I'd play around with this. It's pretty cool. In some old school decks where power is low, pretty neat. Um, yeah, those are the other. I didn't really look at too much financially. Um, I, I didn't look at any market stuff. That this was week. something I noticed. I need to get my rook eggs. 2023 is going to be the year I buy my rook eggs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's like the lunar symbol for the year. The zodiac I want, symbol. I wanted to pick up a few Arabian Nights. I had I had zero Arabian Nights cards until last week, actually. Uh, yeah, I have almost none. And then I went on a buying spree, Alex. Uh-oh, what'd you get? I, I bought two bazaars. I bought two <laughs> libraries. I bought two Island of Walk Walk. What'd you buy? <laughs> Wyoli Wolf. Did you buy Wyoli Wolf? I'm going to reveal it when we get to our purchase oh. segment. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which might be right now. <laughs> okay. Do let's, more? let's do the purchase segment, Steve. Okay, okay. Well, hold on one second. I got I to gotta get my cards. Okay. I'll be right back, too. Don't worry. I'm not far away. I'm coming back, Alex. Don't worry. Alex, now as soon as I get back, then that's when you take the opportunity to stand up and walk away. This is a poorly produced segment. I thought we were just going to edit it out since we both got up. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Do it. Hit me. I wanted to pick up. I just bought, I bought some little stuff, although one of them is kind of big. I just wanted to pick up some things from uh, Legends, Antiquities, and Arabian Nights. Okay. First, I wanted to get some Arabian Nights cards because I have no Arabian Nights cards. And there are several that I will have fun playing with. So, And they've all been reprinted, the ones I want. But I wanted to get the original OG Arabian Nights because uh, they're, much, they're much more expensive than the reprints. You yeah. know, 20, 30 bucks as opposed to, in many cases, like from a dollar or two. Yeah, they're still affordable. <laughs> and as Arabian Nights commons even, they're still pretty rare. So I'm like, hey, they look cooler. They're still fairly affordable. Why don't I pick up some copies right now? Yeah, sweet. That's the kind of thing I'm looking at right now. I also to continue to buy some Legends because I'm I'm just going to spend the next couple of years buying some stuff from Legends that I want. Just Legends, Legends, or just cards from Legends? Well, in this case, it's just cards from Legends. I didn't pick up any more Legendary characters. And then I also picked up a card from Antiquities. I don't know why. I'll start with this one, Alex. You don't know why? I don't know why or I bought it. regretting bought- your decision? I bought a Mite Stone. I mean, I oh, know why. I know oh, why I bought it. Neat. Okay. The art is fucking awesome on the. It's mite pretty cool looking card with the black border. So this is the only reason I bought it, because I love the art. I don't remember what I bought it for, but Mite Stones aren't that expensive right now. Did, this, did they do that in like Chronicles or Fifth Edition or something? This is seventeen dollars. I didn't buy it for seventy dollars. It wasn't that expensive. I was going to ask if it was twenty or something. That's kind of. It I is reserve thinking. list too. Oh. Uh, snap I was wrong and it didn't get reprinted so I'm like I don't know that I'll ever actually play the might stone it's four colorless continuous artifact all attacking hey. creatures gain plus one plus zero I could add that to my group friend deck yeah I was going to say kind of fun in a commander environment and yes I wasn't even thinking oh, about the group fun deck but this would be the kind of thing that people would enjoy when you play the art I do like is the art too. so cool the art on the looks, stone. yeah there aren't many. I, there are some cards from. I was gonna say there aren't many cards from antiquities that I think are like super playable and also cheap. Uh, but I, I guess I kind of changed my tune about that as I've been going through the set again, like over the last few weeks. We were talking about antiquities two weeks ago, and we were seeing a lot of things that were still like under five dollars. I was like, I can kind of see playing this in like an old school environment. It would be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Might sounds one of those cards, but I honestly don't think I'll play it. I just bought it for the art. I'm not sure why. <laughs> yeah, four mana is so much for what it does. It's yeah, like a, that's just a big one thing. plus one. But it's pretty cool. I bet uh, it looks like the hand of the Colossus of Sardia. Well, maybe it is. It's my guess. This is going to go on my Colossus of Sardia deck. Yeah. <laughs> Next well, that's I bought. cool. I like that. Nice pickup. I did, Alex. I bought the Wailuli Wolves. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. Look, light mana symbol, thirty six. Holy crap! What a steal! Dark mana symbol, what a 10. steal! Ten ninety nine. I think I'm I bought buy this. an Oubliette. 
I don't know what I bought them for. I can't remember exactly, but they were around 10 bucks. Why Luli Wolf? If I ever do build an old school deck, which I think I will one day, I will put Why Luli Wolves in it. Uh, I actually bought these, one, because one of them is going to go in my commander deck. And two, because I do want to very, very slowly, probably over the course of years, build an old school deck. And Mono Green actually does pretty well in high-powered old-school environments. Okay. I know this uh, is still a relevant card. You yeah, know. for fairly cheap. Like, you can build a mono-green deck with uh, Pendlehaven, Wailuli Wolves, uh, Giant Gross, Berserks, Scrib Sprites, Tinder Wolves, and still win some games sometimes, you know? Uh, so that's kind of why I bought the Wailuli Wolf. I was always calling it Wailuli Wolf. I was also going to say, in there. I always call it Wyoli Wolf, but it is spelled Wyluli Wolves. Yeah. Maybe it is pronounced Wyoli Wolves. The first L is silent. We don't know. I think it's just because that's what people in middle school that we knew said. I know. And we said it too instead of reading. Also fun art. It looks yeah, like it's cool art. Like the wolf t-shirt that we grew up with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's not a thing anymore, is it? Right? People aren't like Oh no, that's ironically, definitely a thing still. Are they still ironically wearing wolf t-shirts for something? Yeah. Both okay. ironically <laughs> and genuinely. Okay. It still exists. I don't see them. Maybe just where you're living right now, because that town yeah, is like definitely. stuck yeah, in yeah. a certain era. <laughs> definitely people you definitely still see like dragon a, a dragon with the lightning bolt or something too, like in the same vein. Do you still see affliction shirts? No, that's pretty much gone away. Yeah, I think that I don't brand doesn't exist I'm sure anymore. people are still wearing them, but not like it was when, when we worked at the liquor store. Like Every Friday night, it was like nothing but dudes in affliction shirts coming in all night long. Terrible. Terrible times. <laughs> Terrible times. <laughs> Next pickup, Alex. Something I bought from Legends. I don't know why I bought these cards. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're gonna pick. You're gonna pull up something that I I bought too already. I bet. Pyrotechnics. I don't oh, know. I'm having like these. I bought this because I'm like, oh, maybe in this weird format that I've never actually played before and probably never will play. I this is maybe somewhat playable in that weird, very limited format. Yeah. It's uh, they're also super cheap. They're under a buck right now. Still, they're Legends Commons C twos Pyrotechnics. Four colorless, one red, sorcery. Pyrotechnics does four damage divided any way you choose among any number of targets. So it's like, it's a fireball, but yeah. limited to four. It's yeah. the same same casting cost that you would pay for a four damage fireball. Yeah. It's just a fireball. Yeah. So it's limited to four. <laughs> yeah. Cover all the bases on that one, man. Uh, the reason I think I bought these... It's because I was watching the YouTube videos. There's an old school format that is called the Four Horsemen format. Okay. And it's just decks. It's built, it's decks constructed solely from cards from the Four Horsemen sets. No, I think okay. there's no base set cards allowed in it. Oh, just the expansions. Okay. I could be wrong. They might allow like a small set of them. I don't really know. Well, this makes sense though, because then Fireball wouldn't be in. Would it be there? Know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there was somebody who's like trying to make the format a big thing and they have a whole website up about it and they start, they uh, put together like an online tournament and they recorded the matches and they edited the videos together and they have like Brian Weissman and somebody else doing commentary on it. And Brian Weissman was talking about the, the deck with pyrotechnics in it. And he's like, oh, it's not really, it's, he was, I don't know exactly what he said, but he was trying to like lay out the case why it's somewhat playable in the Four Horsemen format. And I'm like, so, oh, I should get two pyrotechnics uh, for <laughs> some stupid reason. Yeah. These, so these two, are my decision making processes as well. Yeah. So I bought two pyrotechnics. I, I'm down, uh, you know, a buck twenty-five. Oh well. So, so I, I also I like just this. love, I love having legends cards, Alex. I know, just, even if I'll they're buy, stupid. Was, any, anything for a buck, I'll buy any legends card for a buck. That's why not. Yeah, uh, have them as a, you know, I'd like to have a set eventually. I won't ever, but like you know, I could always have a set of all the legends commons. Wouldn't be bad. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I'm glad you told that story because I like, you know, the idea of having cards that are suboptimal that you might end up using in some sort of uh, odd format play, you know, with your friends. Uh, well, that's what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about how, like, you know, we make up some weird rules. Exactly. So many things are out of my price range. Like draft. Especially in the old school world. But like, I don't have to play normal formats. I can find a group of people that just want to play with a limited set of cards. And you can play old stuff uh, without the power cards. Yeah. It and would as be long fun as, for me. As long as your play Sorry. group isn't playing the power cards against you, like right. stuff like yeah, Might Stone or, or Pyrotechnics. Yes, could it's be just really, dialing really back fun. the power yeah. level. Exactly. Um, and yeah, I would do that. It's kind of, to me, you know, like back when we started playing and revised, we'd be making decks with almost anything in them. You know, there were lots of bad cards we were playing with. And mm -hmm. it would be, but but since we started in revised, we never had that experience really with like legends or some of the, you know, antiquities. So it'd be kind of fun to play in that environment with like legends and antiquities cards that are not great that we would have been playing with if they'd been some of the first packs we had ever opened. Yeah. 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 So I feel that way. I've bought a lot of legends cards over the last year that probably aren't all that great, just legends commons and stuff, yeah. but uh, many are better than Venerian gold. Just cause some of, just some of them just because of the artwork. You know? I bought that too. Actually I had this, I, I, I have this, I have this fantasy of us like putting together like a, an old school popper play group. Uh -huh. And make an yeah, old school pop like that. Deck. That'd be fun. Yeah. Some kind of old kind of old cube deal. That'd be fun. So I bought a lot of Venerian. I, I not a lot of Venerian. I bought four Venerian golds. Oh wow! That reason. I only one. Ooh, jelly. Uh, actually, I think Venerian gold. I talked about it in one of the first YouTube videos that I ever made when I was just trying to figure out how to upload a video. Oh yeah, I, I, I think put we a, did have that in there in like the purchases or I something. I put out a series of like popper purchases video because mm -hmm. I was just buying popper cards at the time, I was just buying commons. But they were like commons that nobody right now actually plays with when they play popper format because nobody's playing with nobody's playing four horsemen uh popper. Right, yeah, getting really specific now. But I want to. <laughs> but we can do it and we can afford it. <laughs> so That's I bought Venerian Golds for those reasons. Okay, cool. I'm glad. By the way, the art on this is wonky. <laughs> Ants and Maddox. I don't. I don't hate it or anything, but it's, yeah. it's a little weird. Not not Jeff A. Menges. It is a little bit weird. I don't know. I, I know it's like trying to do perspective on her leg bent backwards behind her, but it sort of looks like she has like a weird peg leg club foot thing. She's got something big in her pocket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like a. <laughs> That's her cell phone. <laughs> I don't know what else Anson, Anson Maddox. I recognize that name. I'm just blanking on oh, what, yeah, what yeah. else he's uh, what, else, what other from... cards he's done. But he's a very prolific Magic the Gathering artist. Yeah. Okay, Alex. Now this is the big this is the big legend that I bought. It's not a huge okay. legend, but it's bigger than these ones. It's not cheap, but it has been reprinted before. I bought a greed, Alex, and I wanted the original oh. Legends one. Oh, cool. It was about 50 bucks. Oh, wow. Very nice condition. I was looking at this card and I was like, you know, I never played this card back in the day. I always overlooked it. I never played Necropotence back in the day either. I always yeah, overlooked it. Yeah, this is like it. the OG Necro. It's, uh, it's actually legal in some formats where Necro isn't. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I want to oh. try to throw a greed in it. Like pre-modern, for instance, because it was printed in 4th edition. Oh. Oh. So it's pre-modern legal, but... But wait, Necro is too. Necro's not pre-modern legal. It was in 5th edition? But it's on the banned list in pre-modern. Oh. Uh, yeah. They banned so it. wise. So wise. So greed, you have to... You lose two life, so um, you have to... You lose two life and you have to waste a black mana to, to draw an yeah. extra card, but I'm like... You know, I don't know. Maybe it's still I'll, not bad. Maybe I'll throw this in a deck, see how it works. Uh, maybe the card advantage from a suboptimal Necro could still do some good work in the pre-modern format. Being able to draw cards, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, the paying mana for it kind of sucks, but 
I don't know. It's 50 bucks for a reason, right? I don't know either, but I bought it. <laughs> I mean, if it's I want, 50 bucks, want... people are playing it. It's not 50 bucks just because it's like... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it could be 50 oh. bucks because it's a Legends Rare. I mean, it actually could be because... Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's been reprinted. We were just looking at Willow Sater last week, which is like 115 bucks. I, right I noticed now. that Elder people. Land Worm is like 30 oh. bucks. I was like, what the heck? And then I was I like, know. it's a rare? That's why? Stupid. But either way, definitely not a terrible card. I don't know if it's going to win me a bunch of games or not. We'll see how it does when I start playing it. But I want to buy Legends cards uh, out of the old sets. Like Legends is the one, I's, uh, one I've been focusing on the most. So like every month I try to buy like something from Legends. Sometimes it's just a common. Sometimes it's like a rare that's been reprinted. Last year I bought several like legendary creatures that hadn't been reprinted, like an Adun Oak and Shield and maybe like one or two others. I can't remember. But most of most of the things I've been buying from Legends were reprinted already. So I'm targeting like the the rares that aren't too expensive because they have cheaper printings and other and other sets. But still I like the Legends better. I love Legends. It looks so much better. Oh classic, yeah. Classic classic portfolio art. Those are my purchases. My cool. recent purchases. I enjoy them. All old school stuff. Purchases. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. What do you got coming, Alex? These purchases out. Coming? We're gonna let me see. Um, what did you pick up lately? What are you gonna do? That? With oh it? no, nothing that no no it's not are a grinning they, totem. Are they collectible stuff? Or are they are they things you're gonna put I in? I was deck? flashing my grinning totems and Oh, it like it was a secret. People are going to get jealous yeah. if they oh, see that see. stash. A couple, uh, some of this is just like pre-modern common stuff I bought to like, you know, I've been looking for picking up two more elephant guides. I have a couple already. Um, I'm into that card. I love that yeah, card. I know how much you like it. Let me open up my my packages here. I think I mentioned last week that I got Arcanus the Omnipotent. Mm -hmm. We did talk about that um, a little bit. I like him. I got two copies of that. Uh, and I'm definitely going to try to put him into some kind of deck. Um, let's see here. Uh, one with nature. I don't know what that is. I think I mentioned it on here before because this is my second copy. It's a one green enchantment. Uh, whenever the enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, I get to tutor for a basic land and put it into play tapped. Okay. Then shuffle your library. Yeah. Whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card into play tapped. Interesting. It's a wild centaur. He's, he's yeah, he's rowdy. Is this going to go on your unblockability deck? Oh, it's any kind of like damage. like enchantress too. deck or something, maybe. Yeah. This would pair well with uh, uh, Rancor, something that gives, you know, something that has Trample, anything that has Trample. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Good call with Trample, yeah. Mm -hmm. Trample through, drawn cards or drawn lands every time, thinning your deck, put more land in play. It's just a one drop. Um, I should do this already. Forgotten Ancient. Uh, this guy's kind of like sitting out Druid. But he's an elemental tree creature monster. I love one elemental green, tree creature monsters. One green, three colorless, zero, three. Whenever a player plays a spell, he gets plus one, plus one. I like that. At the beginning of my upkeep, I may move any wow. number of those counters onto other creatures. This is cool. You and showed really this to me before. I forgot. Yeah, multiplayer. I I again. He's going to yeah. be getting all those plus one, plus ones, and I can shift in my other creatures if I want. Pretty good. Um, Wirewood Symbiote. We might have talked about this once in like we an did. You early... You liked it. I do. I think I had this when we saw each other in person. Uh, he's one green, one one. He's an insect. You can return an elf you control to your hand. Untap target creature. Mm -hmm. Use it only once per turn. I see this played in elf decks. Pre yeah. modern elves. Yeah, I bought it for elf deck. It looks like an insect like uh, riding the the head of the Grinch. Oh yeah. 
a weird misshapen Grinch face. Huh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. <laughs> symbiote from scourge 353 market price something happened to this card in 2021 where people started loving it all of a sudden yeah that's a big spike there also 5x for no apparent reason i like him i think he's pretty cool some versatility you can use it to save an elf's life too yeah no i like it i definitely like it you can save use it to save critical elves it's also untapping creatures i mean an elf deck to mana elves you can use it to untap mana elves to get twice as much mana out of it save critical elves I love saving um, critical elves. So I'm going to show I'm going to show you two. One of these I mentioned already. These are two land destruction type spells. I'm always like kind of picking up some land destruction stuff because one day I want to have a land destruction deck. Um, I was trying to build a, la- a pre modern land destruction deck today. I just opened up Moxfield and I started thinking, what cards would I put in a pre modern land destruction deck? Started playing around with some stuff. I want to do that too because it was very fun using Winter's Grasps to destroy your. To destroy your land a few weeks ago. <laughs> I was very much into that. Well, I got <clears throat> from Invasion Turf Wound. It is the casting cost of Stone Rain, two colorless, one red. But instead of destroying a land, a target player can't play lands this turn. And oh. then you draw a card. Okay. So uh, I think I mentioned to you before, I like this because it, it does the same tempo change pretty much as a land destruction spell. Puts you yeah. one, a tur- one turn ahead of your opponent. But it gives you the card draw, the cantrip effect on top of what would be a stone rain casting cost. Mm-hmm. So I like that. And then Tremble from, I think this is Odyssey. Uh, this is a sorcery for one red, one colorless. <clears throat> Sorry for the bad lighting. One red, one colorless. Each player sacrifices a land. Okay. <clears throat> uh, useful in multiplayer. And I kind of like it for land destruction if you get ahead, like in tempo, yeah, and then you're at the point where you don't mind losing a land anymore, you can use it to like really punish your opponent just for two mana. All you need to do is, yes, stay ahead. Stay ahead, yeah. For sure. So, I like those two. Some interesting land destruction. I um, always want to do something with a deck, too, where like I, there are all sorts of cards that require like really cool cards. I can't remember any of them off the top of my head, <laughs> but I'm always coming across them. That require you to uh, sacrifice a land for something, or allow you to sacrifice a land for something if you want to, or like the pitch spells where you could pitch lands if you want to. I always want to try to get decks like that that are sacrifice a land to bring something out fast, but then also synergize with things that like bring lands from the graveyard or require lands to be in the graveyard or something. I like that, but I don't. Are there a lot of cards that do that? That's my. I don't question. know. That's why I'm not I sure there's too enough many that I'm bring enough. land back from the graveyard. I'm not sure that there's enough out there to make it work. It just I always think of rogue elephant harvest worm. I just want to just play like a rogue elephant and then harvest worm. Mm-hmm. Rogue elephant's a three three one drop sacrifice a land, and then harvest worm is can't remember what it was. I have harvest worms. I bought them because I like them. Yeah, one colorless, one green, three, two. When it comes into play, return any basic land card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very harvest worm. So, like things like this that bring them back, or even cards that want a land in the graveyard in order to have some effect. And I'm blanking on the name of the card, but it's a red card that has like a creepily little, like, it looks like a goblin fetus guy with like a shovel. Uh, From like what set do you know? I can't what remember. You, it's, a, it's a pre-modern set. I don't know if it's judgment. I think it's a judgment card. Oh, okay. I probably don't know that. But it's like if I think it's if, if there's a I shouldn't even start talking about it because I can't remember. I Because I can't remember. I was going to say that it's if you have a mountain in the graveyard, it gives all your creatures haste. But that might, might oh, not be the case. It might be if there's a mountain. It might be if there's a mountain in your uh, in Opponents play. Oh, oh, then it gives you, you haste, which would be the opposite. Then you don't want to sack. Keep my eyes open for that. You, you, if you have more things to go through, you just talk, and then I will find this card because okay. I think people play it in pre money. Just a couple more. Uh, you've typed this one in though. I think. Uh, okay. French worm. We just talked about worms. Harvest worm. Here's and its land destruction. So this is a. Related on two accounts. Trench Worm. I don't think this card's particularly good, but 
I saw it and I liked it and it was super cheap. So I bought some invasion. Ooh. Yeah. Scary. Three colorless, one black creature worm, two colorless, one red tap to destroy target non-basic land. Three, three. Yeah. I mean, so, it, no, it's not a bad casting pot. I mean, it's not a bad power toughness for its casting cost. It's not like huge or anything, but yeah, for a three, three with an ability, the, pat, the casting cost isn't terrible. And he has this like stone rain ability for non-basic lands. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure of a situation where I'd use it really like an ill land destruction deck. I feel like I'll put spells in and uh, then that will be enough land destruction. I don't think I'll need this guy to yeah. like, use his ability repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, Probably. But again, it may be some kind of like lower powered you know, block format that we're playing or something. He might be fun to have around. I just found the card I was trying to think of, Alex, and it's not oh, cool. at all. It's not at all what I want. Oh, so it's like the it's like the opposite of everything that I would want. <laughs> we, this is the weirdest. Oh, that guy's creepy. Art. Look at him. I, know. I don't even know what he is. And what it, a creepo. The art is so strange too. It looks almost like it's like I can't almost CGI like, or it's like a mix between CGI and claymation. I, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It looks like. Uh, I don't even know what the media is that he used. A really old video game, like a Nintendo sixty four killer instinct character john avon who does like the best landscapes in magic he, like all the coolest lands are john avon lands i shouldn't say all of them but a lot of them are and then but when he draws figures it's like this is the way he comes up yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the weirdest goblin guy it's the weirdest figure in magic yeah it's not a, at all what i wanted as long as anger is in your graveyard so it has to be in your graveyard not a mountain and you have to control uh. a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the creatures you control have haste. Well, you so definitely not control a mountain. I don't know why they even put that on there. That's weird. Like it's yeah. like you're gonna have a mountain, probably. Uh people put this in elves decks with just one mountain and then this. What? Uh, yeah. What? It's like weird. some of the some of the most competitive pre-modern elves decks run survival of the fittest uh to get big creatures out, and then this plus one mountain and i don't know how they and make there's sure they nothing get... else to, that they want to use to give their controllers haste this is the route by which they want to give their elves haste yes huh. i don't see anything else in this list that i'm looking at right now that is haste related well i just mean there's not like a haste card that's better than this <laughs> oh like, yeah I, I don't know like uh, some it... kind of enchantment that gives all your creatures haste or an instant that gives everything haste this turn Oh, so I mean, this survival elves deck, it's a red, it's a, sorry. Yeah, it's a red green deck. There's definitely an enchantment. There's Fires of y Yavamaya. Jeez Louise. Yavama <laughs> Yavamaya. One colorless, one red, one green. Okay. All right. Interesting. Enchantment. Dang it. Well, speaking of green red. Here we go. Oh. Creatures you control have haste. Sacrifice fires. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Okay. Uh, but no, they just want this one mountain and they want anger. It's surprising. Okay. But it apparently works for people who know how to. Oh, look at it. Yeah, deck. I'm sure. You know the other cards. Yeah, and it synergize somehow else with that. Um, I was going to mention Surge of Strength. I, I think I I talked about this with you off the show because. They mentioned it in a book. Can I reach it? Oh, yeah. Good old alliances. Good old so, washed out alliances. Artwork. Washed out alliances washed out. cards. It's, mine, not, it's not the artwork's fault. It's the printing. It's the mine's printing. not that washed out. Mine looks... I have one that is and one that isn't. I don't okay. know if you can almost certainly not tell the difference. I can't tell because you just put on funky backlight. colors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Everything looks blue. One that's washed out, one that isn't. But this is like a poor man's berserk, kind of, is the way I think of it. Um, one red, one green instant. Choose and discard a red or green card from your hand to have target creature gain trample and plus X plus zero until end of turn where X is equal to that creature's casting cost. Put this in my... Colossus of Sardia deck pitch Colossus of Sardia. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Love it. 
They mentioned it though in my my magic encyclopedia. <laughs> uh, Were they like the best card in alliances? Day. Yeah. Well, every set in this book has a little write up prior to the prior. Hold on. Get to the right page. This is a pitch though you, from alliances that we didn't talk about. Yeah, that's true. Right? In case you don't know, this book has nice illustrations of all like the cards from different sets, which back in the text only internet days was a pretty yeah. big deal. Uh, you couldn't just like pull up, you know, you could, there was internet, but you couldn't just pull up like a resource that had pictures of all these cards. Life was difficult. It took, it took, uh, it took three minutes for each one of those pictures to load on AOL. Yeah. Even the magazines like Scry and Inquest and stuff, they didn't have like pictures of everything. They just had like text lines of the prices. There'd be pictures sometimes with write-ups. But every uh, every chapter had like a like a little write-up about the set, cards that were famous from it, cards that were like tournament, you know, staples at the time or whatever. And when I went through here, I was looking at a couple. They were mentioning Arcane Denial which I picked up a few of recently. I think I talked about on the podcast, uh, but they said surge of strength. And I know I had one. Uh, it's not expensive. It's just worth a couple of cents or something, but I knew I had one in my box and I looked at it up again and saw what it did. And I was like, this was maybe not as bad as I gave it credit for. So I bought two more or something for a couple of cents. I might pick one up too. Cause I'm building this I commander am. deck. It's red green mostly. Oh yeah. This might be a nice one. Up. I can't afford a Berserk. Berserk is crazy. And I'm going to buy one this year. If I get one, it has yeah. to be an unlimited one. I don't oh, want yeah, of course. A yeah. not a, and that means it's like they're like $180 or $160. Oh. Really? I thought they were closer to 100 than 200 I, I think I looked the other day. And At I least for now. But okay. Maybe Who knows what's going to happen? I'm be able to get one a little cheaper. Yeah. Those are most of my purchases. Last one, I'll send you a pic of this. We can put this up maybe on the Twitter or something. Uh, a couple Alex, unlimited. Hold on a second. Let's go. Let's let's take a step back. You're gonna post it on Twitter. What you, what's okay, this sure. nonsense about? You well, sent me the pictures. I was gonna send you these pictures. I thought you would like them. You can't see them too well on here. And I thought you would appreciate. I got okay. It. Yes. You you send me the picture, but then also you post them on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you have the password, buddy. I got here. We got oh, two wait, sirens. Siren's call. <laughs> siren's call? What are, are they unlimited or something? They're they're unlimited okay. and four unlimited mountains. Ooh, ooh, two okay. of the purple and two. Those of are the all blue islands, purple. Alex. Did you say mountains? Uh, did I say mountains? I didn't mean that. I meant islands. You might have four said islands. unlimited islands. Two of each of the two colors. Um, I'm working. Okay, I'm trying to collect some unlimited lands and beta lands. I'm most of the way through Unlimited. I have just about everything. I'm missing a few. And I have four beta lands, I think. Basically. Looking lands. good, looking good. So I'd like to have a set of each of those. I think it would look really nice, like in a binder or in some kind of like frame or something. Mm -hmm. All the lands from Magic. Siren's Call. This card, um, aside from being pretty cool, uh, people use this in combos with things that like Nettling him or Maddening him, we've mentioned before. Um, to destroy creatures. It's cheap, useful card, but the unlimited coloring is so much better than the revised. Like, there's a lot more vibrant, like yeah. red and orange in it. Yeah. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, I gotta have a couple of these in unlimited. They look so much better. One blue instant. Yeah, All of target opponent's creatures that it can attack must do so. At end of turn, destroy any non wall creatures that did not attack. Play only during opponent's turn, before opponent's attack. Siren's Call does not affect creatures brought under opponent's control. This turn, the artist Alex, Anson Maddox. Oh, okay. who drew The wonky pyrotechnics artist. <laughs> but yeah, this one, and I think I mentioned before, Slate of Mind, I've probably mentioned this a few times now, uh, the, the contrast between the unlimited and the revised Slate of Mind is very significant and it makes me want a slate of mind um, but they're like 30 bucks because it's a rare yeah so those are my neat purchases recently 
add an unlimited slate of mind to the pile of things that like I would like to have but will never buy. It's this is what happens every time I want to buy a card. I'm like, oh, I should get the unlimited version. Like I could afford the unlimited version. Then but then if you these. if you do that, like it just adds up. It just keeps adding up. Yeah. It's like just I mean like little stuff. It's like, oh, I can get the revised version for uh, two dollars. Oh, the unlimited the unlimited one's only twenty five bucks. Okay, do that. Build a deck. All of a sudden, you've just spent a ton of money that yeah. you didn't need to spend. As I'm saying that, as I just bought a Legends Greed instead of the fifth edition Greed or whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't play white border fifth edition cards if there's a black border older version of it. I have to limit myself. I'm limited myself to doing things like that right now for legends. And then also I say that as I, as I just bought out Arabian Nights, where I only woke when I could have bought like the fourth of it. <laughs> legends Arabian Arabian Nights. Nights. I can't do it for, I can't do it for the base set. I guess that's what I'm, that's how I feel right now. Like if there's a revised, yeah. I can't get the unlimited one. I just can't I'm only it. doing it for the inexpensive ones. If it's like under $10. Oh yeah. Uh, then I'll buy unli- you know unlimited three or four dollar cards. I feel like are a steal. The Sirens Call these were two fifty or something three dollars. I can't remember. They were cheap. Yeah, that's not much uh, at all. So I'll do that for you know stuff. But when it starts getting into like you know you know a Howling Mine revised is ten dollars and unlimited is like whatever sixty or eighty. Yeah, or I don't know what it is. Uh, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, they're desirable. Desirable. Uh, unlo- I'd love to have unlimited black vice, but now it's twenty bucks a pop instead of a dollar or two dollars. I was looking at beta black vices. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful, and unlimited winter orbs. Oh yeah, those look so good. I want to get an unlimited icy. Sigh. Oh well. Oh well. We still have our health. <laughs> <laughs> For now, <laughs> no unlimited howling mines. But <laughs> uh, okay, that's that's the end of the old man magic purchases segment. Yeah. Now so we're gonna finish. We're gonna waters. finish. We're gonna finish the show the way we finish in all of our episodes this year, which is the old men and our final segment every episode this year. Is the old man magic commander corner? All right, Alex. Here we are. And we're back, Alex. And we're back. Come in, the commander corner resumes. Alex, the my I have my additions ready for for this episode. The nice. additions to my commander deck. If anybody doesn't know, so we've only been doing this for three episodes. Alex and I are putting together our first commander decks. They are going to be terrible. Right Terrible. now, they're using only old frame cards. So they're so, going to be weak. From Alpha to Scourge. We have no Alpha, but still from Alpha to Scourge. Uh, it's because that is all we have at the moment. Yes, so they will be terrible, but we will love them because they will be our first. <laughs> so at, the end of, at the end of every episode, we're very slowly putting these commander decks together. So at the end of every episode, we're going to reveal a couple cards that have officially been added to our decks. And I say officially, but they could also be taken out mid-season. Right, no. yes. Semi-officially. <laughs> Officially for now, but... Alex, my additions... By them. Yes, they, they all have asterisks. These decks will evolve throughout the course of the year. The additions today, Alex, for Steve's first ever commander deck. Wailuli Wolf ah. and Pendle Haven. Beautiful. Pendle Haven is a must-have. To pump. More pumping. In my green horde deck, pump, 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 pump it up. Pump, 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 pump it up. Jacques Levert pumps, Kaza pumps. Now I have Wiley Wolf and Pendlehaven to pump. Are pump you nervous yet, roof. Alex? Yeah. You should be. Yeah. Okay. That's all I'm revealing today. <laughs> okay. Uh, well. <laughs> oh, now we'll go to Alex's deck. So far, Alex has only revealed that his deck will contain Howling Mine. So it's well, we talked about okay. History. So we talked about commanders last week. Let's let's put uh-huh. Corona. Uh, let's put her up there because I'm going to stick with that for now. She might change, but uh, it, it gives me more flexibility. It's five colors anyway, so I can you know if I want to get rid of something, I'll get rid of you know her and that color, extra two colors. Um, 
so far I'm having trouble finding something else I like for a commander mm-hmm. in the colors I want. Uh, Angus McKenzie, I was looking at, but he's obviously very expensive, and okay. I can't afford that. So for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock with this. Phil DeGriff as a backup, maybe. Keep looking. Um, Alex's commander has been revealed. Yeah, it is Corona. False God, one colorless, one white, one blue, one black, one red, one green for a 5-5 creature leaven legend with haste. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player untaps Corona, False God, and gains control of it. Whenever Corona attacks, creatures of the type of your choice get plus three, plus three until end of turn. I'm done. Okay. you have anything to add, Alex? Yeah, sure. I'm going to throw a few more cards in here to catch up. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so obviously now we're dealing with five colors, so I need some mana fixing and manimals. Uh, I haven't decided on my elf type dudes yet, but Birds of Paradise is going to be an auto include and uh, City of Brass as well. So instead of going with an extra animal for now, I'll do a, a multicolored card. Uh, Alex, I love the usage of the term manimals. We are uh, pioneering that term. Uh, I don't know that anybody ever used it before I introduced it to you. Definitely not. The Magic Lexicon, I don't know, like maybe six, seven episodes ago. <laughs> I haven't heard it. I heard mana dorks. I hate that term. Yeah. Why are they dorks? Who says all of them are dorks? Some of them might be, but not all of them. A bird's not a dork. You hear mana elves, but the bird isn't an elf. Bird's not an elf. What else did you hear? I can't remember. There was another term that I heard. I didn't like any of them. I thought mana moles is perfect. Animals. That's me. A fourth edition. Any creature. Fourth edition. I was going to say, are you sure you don't want to be going with that uh, Dominary Remastered version that's Black Border and currently... Maybe. I don't have like... it, though. I don't have it yet. Right now, my Birds of Paradise are 4th edition. Okay, you have it already. Okay, that's better. Yeah. I'm benign these. That one's cool, though. That, Eight that bucks. one fancy one that you just had up. Yeah, I oh, like yeah. This one's cool. seven fifty right now. This is that's the borderless bad. treatment from Dominary Remastered. That's not bad. But we kind of poo pooed this a little bit. Birds. We kind of poo pooed right. this a little bit at some point because it had the tap symbol. We oh like, yeah, we don't yeah. want that. But now I'm looking at it, and like at, when it's been released and it's under ten bucks, I'm like, not many opportunities out there in this world that we live in, Alex, to get a black bordered bird for under ten bucks. Correct. I mean, yeah, no, it's not. I don't hate it. I'm not going to hate on it for that. Fourth edition. Fourth edition. Alex has added Birds of Paradise to his first ever commander deck. Birds of Paradise. Everybody knows. One green, zero one, flying, summon mana birds. Tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Play this ability as an interrupt, which no longer exists. What else did you say, Alex? You said Birds of Paradise. City of Brass from Chronicles. No Arabian Nights City of Brass for us. No, not for us. I don't like this eighth edition one. I, there is one that I like, but it's I think it's also white border, so I kind of don't like it. I think I have one fifth edition. I think I actually bought a fifth edition, maybe like five months ago, because uh, I thought it was pretty nice. That's the one. Yeah, yes. I like the art on that. I just don't yes. like that it's white. If that was in black border, that card would be hot. Yeah. I thought so too. I had a few Chronicles uh, runs from back in the day and I wanted to get another one and I picked up the 5th edition one because I was like, that's pretty good. Look at this Chronicles one dropping in price. Why? Was it recently oh. printed in something? Oh. I went back down to 10 bucks. I don't know. I might just be correcting, but I'm, I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure. I'll have to go back and look real quick. All right. Well, that's a few cards. Th- those are kind of, those two are kind of cheaters and last week is really when i talked about my commander so i'll throw another card in here oh oh damn alex is that okay You're on fire is today too many? no i have lots on my list i you know but i, I don't want to you know burn them all up right off the bat uh, yeah uh, i figured i'm revealing like two to four two to four an episode this card if anything comes out i think red's going to come out red will probably be the first to go from this deck if i cut colors mm-hmm. um but for now i'm going to introduce a red card um, it's but one four. of the only red cards I know for sure that I, I have one or two more maybe, but I, I think I want to put this card in because it synergizes with my commander brand. Never of heard of it. Brand it is a rare from Urza saga, but cheap, but cheap, but cheap. 
Are you saying butt cheap? However, it is cheap. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, is that a term? Saga, however, well, here's here's cheap. what I got I got confused at because I'm like, is that a, something kids are saying these days? Because like butt the, cheek? No, like the term butt hurt. I oh, you know oh, oh, I, oh. I I started hearing people say that <laughs> ten years ago. Like a girl I was dating always said butt hurt. I'm like, you gotta stop saying butt hurt. I can't stand that term. People say reason. it too much. Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. And then I thought you were saying uh, butt cheap, like. <laughs> I'm like, is that a thing people are saying when something's no, like really cheap? No. Like it is this cheap? is cheap, even though it okay. is from Urza's sock. Okay. One colorless instant no, not one colorless. One red. one red instant. Gain control of all permanent you own. Yes. So if somebody steals something, you get to take it back? Yeah. And, and since Corona, the false god, rotates around to other players, I can now nab her back. Son of a bee. <laughs> You son of a bee. This is the kind of thing like when I when I said it's it's hard to build commander decks because I don't build them the same way I would build normal decks. Like if I was building your deck or you give things away, but you would want to take it back sometimes, this would be like a four off in that deck, maybe. Right, exactly. Yeah. But now be, you're yeah. stuck to one of I can only put one in. And I, I feel like what I'll do with that is I'll probably save it for late in the game. People get used to getting Corona. It's going around the table all the time. And they think they have a moot. And all of a sudden, I like steal it back when I'm ready and to make it. And then you knife my, them in the back. Yeah. In the, right in the back. That's the point of the group hug deck. Everyone's this is like disgusting. I thought the point of the group hug was to make sure everybody had a good time. Well, yeah. <laughs> that too. I'm disgusted, Alex. That too. <laughs> Still want to win. <laughs> here we go artifacts there lands there but yeah i thought that was that that works with the commander at least that's a, it'll be a fun little thing to do interesting yeah and i'm sure i'll have some new. other permanents that my opponents end up controlling or things that you know wait uh, what is it hit it hit, 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 okay hop, okay hop. so also okay so also <laughs> this works i just wanted to make sure before i said it i had to okay. look at, squint and look at the because it's permanence <laughs> not cards unless they've changed the around on this um it says permanence if it's permanence that means tokens that i've let my opponents no 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 i'm sorry i looked this up already and they've changed it <laughs> i just remembered you don't, part own, <laughs> you don't own the tokens. They changed how tokens work. It used to be cards would say like Varchild's War Riders would say something like uh, you create a token under opponent's control. And then Brand would allow me to steal my tokens back that I've created as like a negative effect of Varchild's. But now when tokens come into play, they are owned by the player for whom they come into play. I'm looking at the gatherer. Uh, there's a ruling on gatherer for brand. It's just, there's just one ruling. It says a tokens owner is the player who created it. So in the Varchild's war rider situation, wouldn't you be the creator of the token? Cause you have Varchild's war rider. Yeah, I think they just, they might have changed the wording on that and then subsequent, subsequently changed tokens in general. Look up, I'll look up our child's. Have opponent here. create a 1 1 survivor token is now what it says. That's what Varchild's War Rider says now? It used to say put a survi survivor token into play under, under opponent's target opponent's control. control. But and in that case, yours. you would be the creator. Yeah. Now it says have an opponent create a 1 1. Red survivor creature. Okay. Which is bullcrap. That is bullcrap. <laughs> like, what are they creating it with? They didn't have the War Rider card, should be what creates it, and it should be along yeah. to whoever yeah. owns the War Child card. Yeah. I said that very poorly, but you get what I'm I saying. Knew what you meant. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways. Uh, so, maybe can't use Brand with everything, but I think I can use it with Corona and maybe some other things. Have an opponent create a one-one red survivor token. Create out of what? Out of thin air? Yeah. Have I don't like create. this. Well, if I have them create it, didn't I create it? No, you had them do it. Yeah, but <laughs> that does, I, that's a weird, weird <laughs> revision to the card that makes very little sense. I know. I feel like that revision was done only for like, like 
gameplay and rules purposes. It's not like yeah, and it what had the original be, card was meant to do. It had to be for something we're not aware of yet, because there's no way they looked at like the edge case of brand, and we're like, we need to change Varchow's War Riders for brand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like maybe, I'm, maybe they did though. Maybe when Earth's Saga so came weird. out, someone was like. That would be so probably weird. not. It doesn't seem like a game breaking combo. It seems like exactly, a exactly, combo, but not something that would like it's like an in, a one time instant for a one one. Yeah, weird, weird. I wonder what that was. What that was for? By the way, I, I got it. other Varchild's War Riders. Oh hell yeah! I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make a deck with this. I like it's a fun card. Is it gonna go in your group hug commander deck? Well, it, don't yeah, say maybe yet. I think it might because okay. it, it does that. Gives but people's it, stuff, yeah. I'd also like to try it in 60 card deck where I have more than one of this card. So would I. So yeah, this is commander picks. Okay. Sweet, Alex. The decks are coming together. <laughs> 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 they will dominate. <laughs> I will play an elf and then I will give a plus one plus one. Yes, nailed it. Crushing tournament, tournaments, tournaments. tournaments. <laughs> I would like to try playing some like two on two, either two headed giant or just like teams play mm -hmm. instead of you know everyone. Everyone talks about commander so much, and it's always free for all, I guess. But like, I don't know how much people actually play team games. I don't either. And we did it very in a very limited amount like really early on when we played but i can't miss a, that i'd like to play it there's a bunch of commander gameplay online i mean there's a ton of it there's a ton of youtube channels to do that and i never watched them really i've just watched like a minute or two of them here and there there's just so many cards that i don't even recognize that it just i don't yeah. even know what's going on most like of the time a different game <laughs> uh and, you know, the ones I've seen have just, like you said, just been free for all. But again, I've watched so few of them that maybe there are some out there that do uh, teams, teams play every once in a while. I'm not sure. Mm. I don't know how many, how many people play it. Yeah. Okay. I need to talk to more real life people. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Uh, it does. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> terrible. But I think that's it for the day, Alex. I think we're done. Where's the how's the game going? Good show. Uh good game so far. Uh it was I just checked it was six six. Uh nine third quarter? Huh? Are they in the I third think quarter? it's halftime now, and it oh, might okay. be more than six six, but it was that a minute ago. Uh okay. Perfect time to end. That is the end of episode twenty four of the Old Man Magic Podcast. Thank you everybody for listening. If you've made it this far, it means you must have loved the show or you fell asleep. But if you stayed because you <laughs> loved the show, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. We got two new subscribers this week. That's what I'm going for, Alex. At least two a week. That means in 10 years, we'll finally be monetized on YouTube. So if we just keep this pace going, everything's golden. They could have continued watching because they were fueling their anger for us. That's also a possibility. I don't care. I'll take the anger clicks. <laughs> dislike and subscribe. Anger clicks. Yeah. We'll you can dislike anger. too, but you have to subscribe. Jerks. I want subscribers. You can also catch the Old Man Magic podcast on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Do you have anything to say before we end the episode, Alex? Thanks for talking about magic. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. That was fun. Always a good time. Talk to you later. Peace.